Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 21st of March. It's been a generally positive week for markets as investors have tried to claw back some of the losses that we've seen over the last few weeks. A couple of reasons for this. Firstly, in terms of concerns over the Chinese economy, the authorities have said that monetary stimulus in an effort to boost the economy is a distinct possibility. Another reason for positivity has been interest rates. It was widely trailed that both the US and the UK would be raising interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point. They both duly delivered. But the positive thing that is coming out of this is where we go from here. Despite the fact that, for example, the Federal Reserve is likely to raise interest rates another six times this year, what it does mean is that the end of the current game can be seen. And as such, even after those rises, um, rates will still be low by historical standards. Having said all of that, of course, the fly in the ointment from an investment perspective remains Russia and the Ukraine. There's been um, an escalation of action at the same time. uh, Investors aren't quite sure whether the progress in talks is actually happening. This has meant that the oil price has had another volatile week and currently stands up around 38% in the year to date. So despite the positivity of the past week, uh, the main indices do remain in negative territory for the year to date. The Dow Jones is down 5%. The S&P 500 is down 7%. The Nasdaq is down 13%. And the FTSE 100 is still holding up extraordinarily well compared to some of its global peers. It's down just 0.3% in the year to date. Turning to next week, fairly light corporate calendar with the exception of a couple of retailers. First one is Kingfisher, FTSE 100 company, of course, owner of uh, the likes of B&Q and Screwfix. Shares down around 7.5% over the last year or so. But last time we heard from the company, light for light sales were actually 15% ahead of pre-pandemic levels. They may be coming up against some strong comparatives uh, against B&Q, which could provide something of a headwind, as was the expectation that DIY would take a back seat now that people are able to travel. Obviously, cost pressures, uh, pressures and inflation also there in the background. Pre-tax profit expected to be somewhere between 910 and 950 million pounds, and uh, investors will be looking out for any developments that they might tell us about in terms of their launch of Screwfix in France, or indeed the ongoing growth of their e-commerce platform. The other company worthy of note reporting next week, also full year numbers, is Next. Shares here are down 20% over the last year. Um, Up until January, they had been on quite a strong run, but there's been a reasonably sharp decline since then. This is despite the fact that during 2021, they delivered five profit upgrades. And the last time we heard from them at their trading statement in January, they they mentioned that for the, the jewel in the crown, the online business, full price sales were actually up by 45%. However, uh, despite also announcing a special dividend at that time, cost concerns, inflationary concerns, supply chain blockages, and of course, a potential cost of living crisis on the horizon, which will change consumer spending habits, have all tended to weigh down on the price. So Nexus has got a bit of ground to make up on that front. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. 